a second ceramic resonator regenerative receiver. Proof that the first one wasn't just a fluke. Here I've used an IC audio amplifier instead of the BC548 transistor. That gives greater audio output, in fact enough to drive a speaker. This video is mainly a demonstration of receiving when a DX station on 40 meters calls and the ensuing dogpile mainly of other VKs wanting to work him. The case is from a computer power supply. Even though the metal is a bit thin and you have to patch up holes with either printed circuit boards or bits of aluminium, it makes an ideal enclosure for a QRP equipment. And they cost nothing with one in every old computer. The receiver covers from about 7.022 to about 7.135, covering both a portion of the CW and SSB parts of the band. I'll just set it so that it's at maximum oscillation on the highest frequency, and then I'll tune down below. There's this horrible oscillation, so I've got to wind it back. But what we'll do, we'll just set it at the point before it screels on our lowest frequency of around 7025 or a bit below. And we'll tune up. We're tuning up. And this is back up to about 7.135. So we've covered over 100 kilohertz of the band with no touching of the regeneration control. There's a bit of frequency pulling as you change the regen control. If you want to reduce that a little bit, I would go for a higher capacitor value between the base and the emitter of the regenerative detector. But note that when you do that, you do change the tuning range, so it might not be a good trade-off for you. What I'll now do is I'll pull out the power connection and see if the receiver is on frequency when I restore the power. There we are, spot on frequency. Unlikely to get that result with most regen receivers. We'll try again. We'll give it a bit more time and we'll use that time to have a poke around in the receiver. It is much as I described in an earlier video. It's a ceramic resonator regenerative receiver. The component values are much the same, but I'll show a circuit in a minute. The first transistor is an RF amplifier, then the oscillating detector, here's the ceramic resonator. Then, instead of the third BC548 as an audio amplifier, that could only drive a crystal earpiece like that, I've substituted a IC audio amplifier that could use something like an LM386, 
though I used an amplifier from a pair of computer speakers. Anyway, we'll apply power and see if we're still on frequency. Here's a measurement of the current drawn by this receiver, powering a speaker. It's around 8 to 12 milliamps, much less than you might think, and it certainly gives a fresh perspective on how little current a receiver actually needs. Commercially made gear, in contrast, requires about 10 to 100 times more current than is actually necessary. A key consideration if you're going portable and need to carry your battery with you. One thing I want to demonstrate is the effect on the audio output of advancing the regeneration control. Here the receiver is not oscillating at all. Here it's oscillating gently. And as we advance the regeneration, there's more of a peak in the 2 to 5 kilohertz range. Right up here it's a very pronounced peak. And here it's extremely sharp. So if we turn it just to the point of oscillation, and try and tune in some signals. Now there's a clear bandpass characteristic where it's favouring signals around 4 kilohertz. It would be nice if the bandpass of the receiver had the hump more around 800 hertz. That would be more suitable for CW reception. I've experimented with various values inside the receiver, but I've yet to come up with any that's changed the audio characteristics. But if you do experiment with regenerative receivers, I suggest this as an avenue to experiment, and hopefully you'll come up with a receiver that's particularly good for CW reception. I need a car from Puerto Rico. My 
my money here. It's whiskey three, hotel November Kilo. Even though I haven't done the screws up, this is definitely a very solid receiver. This has been another look at regenerative receivers, proving you don't necessarily need a coil and capacitor to give good results. In fact, this arrangement with a ceramic resonator has become my favourite, particularly if you can tolerate the restricted tuning range.